Thank you, Gopi. Let me start with the topic today. Uh, I think first thing. Of course, the skin diseases is one of the area where there will be always some confusion. Confusion about the diagnosis, assessment, and assets. And the practice of dermatology, in other way, it's purely dependent upon the atlas images. So, more than any other investigations, of course, investigations are useful, but most of the time, the diagnosis is good mainly on clinical examination, the visual appeal, and then fine differences in the clinical presentation aspect. Investigations like uh, intervention with investigations like histopathology does help a lot. And many times, uh, it looks like in the contemporary science, the dependency on the investigations makes that dermatology look to be more complex issue. From our practice point of view, the whole approach would be relatively simpler. From Ayurvedic point of view, the approach is relatively simpler. And uh, I would like to make that maybe somewhat coordination between these two, that complex issues and try to make it simpler. That would be the main target of that uh, issue. Now, classification of the skin diseases in the contemporary science is based upon the pathology and the classification is based upon like allergic, infective, connective tissue pathologies and so on. And the whole issue is quite elaborate. And uh, whereas, from Ayurvedic point of view, primarily, the majority of those diseases which are considered as skin diseases could be either in the chapter of the Kushta or a good number of Shutra Kushta and the Shutra are the major areas where we will have a good detail about the skin disorders. Then in addition to that, you will have a good number of disease conditions, other primary disease conditions, where the manifestations of the skin symptoms could be as the secondary presentation. Of course, in the contemporary science also, it is the same thing which is true. So, whatever we would discuss would be based upon this, Kushta, Shudra Roga and then of course the systemic disorders and assets. Now, we will next, next part. The current examination, if you go for the dermatological assessment in the clinical classes related to the dermatology, we discuss a lot about the clinical assessment and the whole diagnosis will be based upon the site of the lesion, number, distribution and arrangement, consistency and so on, which looks like as if it is very modern. But the important issue is, every aspect of the same is described in our Ayurvedic text and maybe they are described in more detail and they help to make the diagnosis much better, maybe, if you have that kind of a vision of the text as well. That's all the basic issue. And one of the important parameters for the diagnosis is the types of the lesion. Next slide. Now, the types of the lesion again, I think this is what the usual students have learned by heart during their course of examination, like macules, papules, and so on. Depending upon the appearance of the lesion, you will have different types. Uh, lesions which are just the surface, they are called as macules, raised papules and then distribution, so on, centripetal, centrifugal, so on, they are the pattern of the distribution by which you make the diagnosis. So ultimately, the final diagnosis is based upon these assessments as such. So I am not going to all the details. The important is next. Now, from the contemporary science point of view, macule is a single presentation. Macule is simply a flat lesion where there could be some discoloration. Whether it is accompanied with other symptoms or not is not the issue. But for an Ayurvedic practitioner, macule is not the end of clinical assessment. Macule is the beginning of that diagnosis, where a summum, a lesion which is at a flat level, and then the, depending upon the color and other accompanying symptoms, we can have a Vataja, Pittaja, Kapaja variation. Just I have given some example, like a macule with an thieves. Like a macule with a darker color and its predominance of vata, it's a simple common sense part. Has a reddish color, is pitaja. When it is a paler color, it's kapaja. Similarly, accompanying with the symptoms, like if it is accompanied with the pain, it's vataja. If it is accompanied with the other signs of inflammation, it's the pitaja. Or it, if there is not much of a symptom as a child, it could be only the itching which is presented as such, then it's the kapaja. So this way, we can have more detailed approach of this type of the lesion. And the same holds good for every type of the lesion. I will not go into all the examples of these types as such, but the same, it is a relatively simple principle which can be adopted to any of those conditions which are presented clinically. 
So next. Similarly, it's about the papules, papules, local raised, surface raised lesion. So when it's Utsana, the surface is slightly raised and then the distribution is a hepazard, irregular as such. That again, based upon the same issues, depending upon the color, the appearance, we can make out that assessment of Vataja, Pitaja, Kapaja and so on. So similarly, the next. So I have given just only three examples, like a scaly lesion. That again, based upon the same issues, the color, appearance and so on. We can have the assessment of Vataja, Pitaja, Kapaja as such. Now once we have made this assessment, the whole management is relatively simple. And the same is described in the text. So it's whatever I have said, it's not from my version. It's what the text say. The text would say is the same. You have to assess the Vata, Pitaja, Kapaja Lakshanas based upon the features like Shak, Sankoja, Swapa, etc. as Vataja Lakshanas or Pata, Avadarana the signs of saturation or inflammation at the Pitta Jalakshanas or Kanvadi Bihi when itching or maybe with a uh, pale color as the signs of the Kappa Lakshana and based upon that you have different names and names of those Kushta Prabhedas again they are very big list as such we will come to that part also but it is not those names which are important once we have assessed these uh, Dosha Lakshanas the management is very simple from my point of view, in all skin disorders, these are the only prescriptions which I do. Maybe the fermentation and combination like, right? like if it is a vata gabyadi, kaishora, rasamani, tegiri rari, or occasionally sari vata yasava, maybe basti, you know, basti, it could be either manjisari basti or could be dashamula basti, depending upon the other condition. Whereas in pittaja, it is the arogya vardini, kama duga, same, same name drugs as it. And in none of those conditions which we are going to discuss now, I, I have not prescribed anything beyond this. These are the only few drugs which we have prescribed and with that, we can manage a good number of patients successfully. But the most important, critical part of the management of dermatological disorders is uh, to predict the prognosis, outcome. That is one of the very difficult job. Unless we are aware of these finer aspects of the clinical presentation, it may not be possible to make out the uh, prognosis as such. And at times, a similar looking lesion, otherwise, may have a good variation in the outcome as such. And that's one of the points which you have to uh, uh, consider as such. My prescriptions in terminological conditions compared to others are one of the different reasons. I rarely use local applications, malaharas. Very rarely I do use them. Of course, I don't say that I never use, but very rarely I use. Generally, the prescription would be whenever you have a skin disorder, there is a general trend. Even for the people also, they would expect the same, like something to be applied locally. But one of the problem with our Malahara preparations are, the base material for the Malahara preparation is either B-Wax or some Krita, Paila, etc. And they have a property of either drying up. B-Wax, when it is applied, it dries up. Or the moisture content of the Kaila also would be more. And a, a person who has a, a lesser concern about the hygiene of the area, and if you go on applying the lepers, the uh, malharas, or any of that sort, they would affect the total hygiene conditions. So, what I have seen is a person who maintains a good hygiene habit has a lesser chance, I am not saying that he never have, but has a lesser chance of developing skin disorder. And uh, in such patients, if you administer these malaharas, many times the malahara themselves may produce certain complications. So, I rarely use local applications. I, I don't say I never use, but I rarely use the local applications. Instead, I would prefer a washing with the kathas, any of the kathas, triple of kathas. So, that is the a slightly different from the usual trend of prescriptions which I practice in my practice as such. Of course, rectum function with jaloka is another option which could be rarely used again, not so frequently in some of the conditions. That's, I think that's the whole gist of what I am going to present in the next one and afterwards. But uh, the next part is about going into the detail as such. So next. Now, from the text point of view, the critical features of the Kushta, Vataja, Pittaja, Kapaja, Kushtas, they are discussed in detail and they, if I go into reading the whole shloka now, many of you, them, you, of you may get more. So what I would like is I would try to dissect these shlokas into individual words and then 
maybe comparatively you can see assess the lesions as such. So next one. Now the first of the lakshana of Vataja Pushta, Ruksha Aruna Parushana. When the surface is dry and the color is red and acid pulpate, the surface area is rough. Now that is exactly what you see in case of the erythema multiforme. Now erythema multiforme is also is a disease of allergic origin. Now the usual allergy, like common allergies, uh, in the sense like which very often may have experience like when you have touched some leaf or something else, temporarily you may have an itching and then a rash, like erythema for a short duration, and then it may subside, uh, which is exactly the shita pitta. That shita pitta is not to be considered as a skin disorder. It's not to be included either in the kushta nor in the shudra It's a different sort of the pathology. But an extension of the same, when a cause of allergen is persisting for a long duration due to continuous uh, contact with that or certain variation in the pathology, the same may result in a static lesion of the erythema and that erythema is a multiforme. Now, that allergic pathology a phenomena which occurs in the body is a very complex phenomena and it can present with the, a huge variation of the clinical symptoms. I will try to show a few of those examples also. Now, among those long contact with the allergic phenomena, one of that is the erythema multiforme and there again we have two categories, erythema multiforme minor and the major. The minor lesions are characteristically having a circumstance previously. A, a characteristically have a relatively a clear cut border and the acid pulpate, there is not much of a raised surface. It is neither a macule nor a papule. You are able to palpate it, but the surface is not raised, rather, it is a discoloration only, and the area could be scattered. Usually, it is localized to some areas, and often the localization is depending upon the area of the contact. It could be like contact with any substance and at that area there could be or at times it could be in the joint areas where the skin is stretched. Uh, rarely it could be generalized and usually it does not last for a long duration. So either last for 3 or 4 days, then again that may recur. So usually history would be of the same, patient would have a scratching feeling, reddish rashes which lasts for 3 to 4 days or 1 week. Then it subsides, again it may recur, maybe the earlier one subsides or earlier does not subside and so on. So at the end, in a long run, you may have the lesions distributed in larger areas as it and characteristically oral mucosa is not involved. Oral mucosa is not involved in that condition and there could be a feeling like it heals spontaneously. Condition seems to have healed spontaneously but there is a tendency for recurrence. So in the long run, after a few months or so, patient would have the same symptoms like and then one or other day they will come to IVIC practitioner. So initially it heals well and it responds well to antihistamine drugs also. When they come to IVIC treatment, many times the condition will be somewhat more chronic and in that condition, if it is not self-limiting, main distress will be Kesharogul and Mandisari because of its predominance of Vata Kappa Jalakshanas. Rather, it's a, rather, it has all the Lakshanas, Vata Pitta Kappa, all the three Lakshanas are there, but predominant Vata Kappa Jalakshanas. So, and usually by one week the condition subsides. Next one. Now, there is another variation of the erythema, that is the erythema multiforme major. And the erythema multiforme major, the criteria is, one is more than 10% of the body area is covered and the mucosa also may be involved. Otherwise, the lesions are similar. But in a major erythema multiforme, the lesions would be somewhat raised and they are better for them. That too is again the same variety, Ruksha, Aruna, Parusha, but only that the level of Parusha, that hardness is somewhat more. And in that condition, I would consider Aragyavardini and Keshavarukul Manjasari as a choice of the treatment. Duration of the treatment now has to be prolonged. It is three months. Now, from the uh, compliance of the treatment by the patient, it is important to predict about the duration of the treatment required in the beginning. So, the total duration of the treatment required in that condition will be more. Some of the patients may be resistant to the simple medical treatment in that condition. Virajana could be the other option of the treatment. Next, next. Now, uh, the same, uh, our description of Vataja uh, Pustas, uh, the extension of the same shloka, I am continuing the same shloka but dissecting it piece by piece. Rukshana Parushani, Visham Vishamavisratani, Kharaparyanta. So, it is uh, the lesions which are initially Rukshana, 
బట్ వెన్ దే టెన్ టు స్ప్రెడ్ హెఫర్స్ ఆఫ్ ఎయిన్ త్రూఅవుట్ ద బాడీ విషమ బీసుతాయి వెన్ దే టెన్ టు స్ప్రెడ్ త్రూఅవుట్ ద బాడీ అండ్ ఖర పర్యంత ద ఎడ్జెస్ దే బికమ్ రఫ్ సెంట్రల్ ఏరియా బికమ్స్ మాయిస్ దట్ ఈస్ వాట్ వి కాల్ ఎస్ ద స్టీవెన్ జాన్సన్ సిల్వర్ అగైన్ ఇట్స్ ద సేమ్ పెథాలజీ ఇట్స్ అన్ ఎక్స్టెన్షన్ ఆఫ్ ద సేమ్ ఎరిటిమ్ అండ్ మల్టీఫార్మే ది కాస్ ఈస్ ఎలర్జిక్ ఓన్లీ బట్ ద ఫినామెన్ ఆఫ్ ద ఎలర్జీ ఈస్ సమ్వాట్ డిఫరెంట్ ఈస్ మోర్ ర్యాపిడ్ అండ్ హిల్ the characteristic a characteristic criterism is somewhat rapid course with the all of a short duration it tends to occur and most of the time the cause is some internal consumption of food or medicines it could be like some specific food or certain specific medicines most of the time so with the penicillin steven jansen syndrome indication incidences are quite high i'm not saying it's only penicillin there could be plenty of other drugs among the food substances uh molasses molasses uh, in rainy season people have the habit of uh, eating that shell shell animals like uh uh nut the local local one is nut and people who consume that they have a higher risk of steven jansen syndrome i am not saying it is not only causes but this is what we see quite frequently and uh, the characteristic would be onset would be sudden and there will be a toxic symptoms like fever and vomiting erythema occurs very rapidly and it results in the skin break getting breakdown and there could be scarring blistering ulcerations even necrosis as such this would be quite difficult to manage uh, most of the times to manage with only our drugs would be quite difficult patient may require glucocorticoids in the initial stage if the glucocorticoids are not administered it can result in more serious problems steven jansen syndrome i would always prefer to treat that condition either if i have to treat with the glucocorticoids initially then of course then it's the same they should google arogya vardhan can be managed but in the acute phase it may be difficult to manage with only our treatment next now the same uh, steven jansen syndrome the variation of that can result in more serious condition the toxic epidermal necrosis where there could be necrosis of the skin also exactly the same pathology the only difference is in the toxic epidermal necrosis the skin tends to peel off the blisters are very rapid they tend to be blackish in color all trichodes and erections are seen and even the oral mucosa is involved and most of the times the condition may become even better so it's a condition which i would like to avoid now the whole issue is a simple case of allergic phenomena can present to say such a wide varying uh, course like from erythema multiforme minor to the toxic epidermal necrosis uh, cause could be the same the it could be the same drug which has produced in three different patient in one patient it could be a simple erythema in another patient it could be necrosis which is the total unpredictable issue that's one of the most complex issue so if there is an evidence of necrosis i would like to avoid that patient because ultimately the prognosis is poor and very rarely the patients would survive if without maybe even with the, the glucocorticoids and the whole outcome even long run outcome would be very poor comparatively incidence is lesser but we do get such patients uh, not so regularly but at least once in or two years we get such patients too and uh, i think i would like to avoid that patient in my practice as well next Thank you.